Hey guys, Aaron here for The Love of Tech, and you are here today because you love YouTube videos, and I am here today because I love making YouTube videos for you, and today I'm going to give you five reasons why you should not buy the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Let's get this out of the way before we get into it. I am a fan of gimmicks which is why I love Samsung phones so much. They come with so many useless gimmicks. I absolutely love it. But Samsung this year pushed a gimmick so hard and they got this gimmick so hyped up that it made me feel like I absolutely have to have this gimmick. And what that gimmick was, was 8K video recording. 8K footage sounds phenomenal. It sounds like I gotta have it, but it's kind of weird. The instance in which 8K footage will probably work proper is if I was recording somebody else, I was doing B-roll. But even then, once you get into that territory, any little bump or jolt or movement makes the camera, the image, the frame extremely rocky and shaky. And the reason for that is there's no image stabilization. You basically sacrifice every other feature that the phone has in order to record in 8K footage. I just don't know for myself as a content creator, as a mobile creator, I don't know what situation in which I'm going to be using this 8K feature. All right guys, I was just informed that the 8K footage I shot on the day that I shot the video you're watching right now didn't come out correctly. I wanted to show you and let you see, right? The phone is more than arm's length away from me. It's hard to frame up this 8K footage if you're alone. This is just another example as to why I think 8K footage is a reason for you not to buy this phone. Just because it can shoot in 8K doesn't mean you should, or we even have the proper equipment for technology to watch it and utilize it. So we're gonna have to render this and we're gonna have to downgrade the resolution in order to render it and load it up to YouTube. But hopefully it will still maintain some of that rich, clear, crisp pictures. And I'm moving my hands on purpose because I want you guys to see that this autofocus gets even more aggressive when it comes to 8K. Another reason why 8K isn't good on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. The autofocus, when you whip your phone out of your pocket and you go to take a picture and you are just hoping the autofocus is gonna come and grab that subject and zoom in on it, it's like, pow! That is not the case with this device. If you want a solid shot, you gotta tell it where the subject is. You gotta wait. It's not really a long wait, but you gotta wait. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link at the end of the video. Go ahead and watch my autofocus fail video. It's got some really good examples in there. Let's talk about money. This phone, crazy expensive. How expensive is it, Aaron? Back in the day, when Apple hit the market with the iPhone 10 or the X, whatever you want to call it, it was like the first thousand dollar smartphone. It was like unheard of. Now it's like the base model. So the base model, the Samsung Galaxy S20 is $999.99. The Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus is $1199.99. And now sure, there's differences between the two and it's all the rage right now that the plus model is the one to get the middle tier of the three it doesn't have the known autofocus issues it's still a little bit more affordable but the samsung galaxy s20 ultra starts out one thousand three hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents i'm not even kidding this thing is so expensive so it's like fourteen hundred bucks taxes and blah 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 throw on like 10 or 12 15 bucks every month for your protection you're totally looking at close to a fifteen hundred dollar purchase with a trade-in $399 for the S20. This is, they're smart, right? They're marketing with a trade-in. The S20 Plus, 
$599. And then the S20 Ultra, $799 and $99. Cents. Now myself, I traded in my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which is a phenomenal content creating media device. So don't count it out. Don't think, oh, the Note series is so far away. I shouldn't consider it wrong. Consider it. It's a major player in the market. So that's reason number two, save some money. You have options. If you're a little lady or a guy with average or small hands, for whatever reason, none of my business, maybe you're born like that, this phone's not gonna work for you. For myself, I've got these big giant paws and I even find myself, I can't reach. I can't. Ah, ah. I can't reach the top. The size of this device is massive. It is one of the largest smartphones that has ever been produced. I've even thought about, mm, I'm still within that period. Maybe I should go to the, uh, to the S20 plus. Maybe I might be happier with that phone, but I'm kind of getting used to the ultra. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to say it and you might not think that it's a good reason, but Android, Android operating system is not for everybody. If you prefer the Android operating system, but there's too much, there's too much gimmicks, there's too many options, too many buttons, too much everything, then maybe you might want to look at the Pixel 4XL, or maybe you even might want to consider one of the OnePlus devices, the OnePlus 6, the OnePlus 6T, the 7 Pro, the 7. Maybe that's what you need to consider. All of those devices are probably cheaper. The starting prices are cheaper than the Galaxy S20 Ultra, that's for sure. If you've never been on Android and you've been rocking iPhones for years and you are used to having people think for you, you are used to having developers determine what your phone is going to look and feel like even though you bought it, then Android's not for you. Android is for people that like to pick up the phone, then want to customize it, or at the very least have the option to severely or overly customize their phone to the point where it looks absolutely nothing like the phone where it came out of the box. I've had people that have they've said this. I like the Android phones. I like Samsung products, but it's overwhelming to me. There's too many features and too many options. It's a thing, right? If you overwhelm a user to the point of they don't know how to use their device or they're worried or they're scared to use their device, then it's probably not the device for them. <sighs> Now that I've said all of that to say this, I'm not getting rid of my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. I absolutely love this device. Actually, let me rephrase that. I might get rid of it if Samsung doesn't try to fix this autofocus thing. If they don't try to improve on it a little bit, I will be disappointed. And that might make me want to get rid of my device. If the S20 Plus is a little bit better, then maybe I'll go that route. But for right now, I'm happy. I enjoy the device. It is fast. It has the 120 hertz screen. Sure, I don't get to have it at the full blast resolution, but you know what? My old people eyeballs, they can't tell. It doesn't matter. I still view content uh, in 1080p most cases. If I want to go ahead and upscale it a little bit, I can. I can turn off the 120 and jump down to 60 hertz if I want, but I'm probably not gonna. It is definitely a trade-off that is worth making in my opinion. Thank you guys for checking out the video. If you like what you heard today and you might want to see more content like this, please go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget the notification bell. And if you want to pay me the ultimate creator compliment, share my content with your friends and family on social media. Till next time, for the love of tech, namaste.